Now is better. We can see it on the full screen. Okay. So basically, I will mm -hmm. be presenting on the topic that is Russia's grand strategy, geopolitics, and redesigning the European security architecture. So I'll be presenting along with my uh, fellow co-presenter, Mr. Mohammed Ali Beg. So firstly, we'll be shedding the light upon the Russia's grand strategy and its supplementary military strategy. So I will passing the torch to Mr. Mohammed Ali Beg. So he'll be presenting on how the Russia's grand strategy is uh, in the continuous flux and is uh, in action in the Ukraine and the Eastern Europe. So over to you, Mr. Ali. Okay, but we cannot see. Cannot see the presenter. Uh, Mr. Mohammed Ali Beg is a presenter, and please make them the co-host. Okay. Okay. You just make a co-host to the Mohammed Ali Beg. Yes. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. We are doing. It's done. Mm -hmm. So, hello, everyone. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, uh, thank you so much for uh, giving us the opportunity to present our views and our research uh, on Russia's uh, grand strategy. Well, I'll be dealing with uh, specifically with Russia's grand strategy and its uh, military strategy. And um, we, we, we have researched it in the past and uh, would like to argue. Uh, that uh, as uh, Russia's uh, classical strategist once uh, uh, once said that doctrine is the daughter of history. So this is exactly what we have been seeing in uh, Russia's uh, strategic culture, which is uh, reflected um, uh, time and again in Russia's grand strategy. So um, Russia is actually uh, hostile with the West, and uh, it's it's transforming the European security architecture, and it's trying to turn into its favor. Uh, well, um, because Russian military has now and has always been a formidable actor, a very important actor in implementing Russia's grand strategic vision, uh, starting from Alexander Sveshin, uh, Mikhail Frons. Uh, later on, we saw the deep maneuver groups, um, the idea that was uh, given by uh, Red Army's uh, uh, General, uh, General uh, Mikhail Tokhashevsky. And the scene was actually executed during the Second World War uh, by Marshal Georgi Zukhov. Contemporarily, we have been witnessing the same uh, thinking uh, in Russia's uh, military thinking, which has been spearheaded by Russia's current uh, chief of staff, General Valery Gerasimov. And we have uh, uh, read his uh, article that was published almost uh, a decade ago. Uh, where he presented uh, the importance of science in the modern military operations. So this is exactly what we have been seeing uh, right now uh, in Russia's uh, military operations. Uh, previously, uh, in, in 2008, we saw, and before even 2008, we saw the same in the first and second Chechen war. We saw in, in, in Georgia, we saw in South Ossetia, we saw in Abkhazia. I think we are witnessing the same in Kural Islands, we are witnessing in Kaliningrad. And most recently, we have been seeing that the same tendency of conducting military operations to get its former territories back, especially in Ukraine. Uh, almost a decade ago, uh, in March 2014, we saw such operations in Crimea. So, yes. Uh, Time and again, Russia's uh, military thinking has been driven by uh, this doctrine of its uh, uh, to take the old territories back using hard power. And uh, Russia has done it successfully, perhaps, uh, that it has uh, conducted successful military operations, though its operations in Syria, its uh, military presence, tri military presence in Tartus and Latakia in, in Syria is uh, perhaps uh, one, of, one of its kind of uh, military deployment in Russia's uh, strategic history paths. So yes, uh, Russia is, is, is doing that. And, uh, but we need to, because I'd leave uh, this uh, research area for other 
researchers to think and to do research that what are the variables uh, which are influencing Russia to opt such a grand strategy which is dominated by its military strategy. So uh, there has been a lot of um, uh, hue and cry in the West um, about Russia's hybrid warfare and its gray zone military operations. So, um, so uh, this is actually my part. This was actually my part. So over to uh, my research assistant, Mr. Shahid Ahmed, and he will uh, do the rest of the presentation. I thank you all. Spiceiba. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Ali. Uh, then, uh, as my co-presenter has uh, shed the light upon the Russia's grand strategy, now I'll be explaining uh, to how to understand the Russia's grand strategic mindset and its implication for the Eastern and Western Europe, and also how this grand strategic mindset is affecting the Russia's strategic calculation. So firstly, Russia has a holistic policy posture that is driven by its domestic and external anxieties. When we explain that how Russia is having a holistic policy posture, so we uh, come to a conclusion that the European security architecture, which was emerged uh, after the end of the Cold War, is now being challenged by uh, Russian actions and its aggressive posture. The Russia strategy of challenging the European security architecture is progressing in the multi-pronged way. Firstly, we can see that it is uh, violating the arms control arrangement. It is using the increasingly aggression against its neighbor countries. We have seen in the Ukraine, we have seen in the Georgia, and even we have seen uh, this uh, same posture in the Syria and, uh, and so on. Thirdly, uh, Russia, we can also see that Russia is continuously trying to undermine the NATO and the European Union, as it see the European Union and NATO as a vestige of the Cold War uh, that, is, um, that is threatening to its national interest. Secondly, Russia's aggressive posture in Crimea, Georgia, and Eastern Ukraine is a wake-up call that is shaking the European security architecture. So when we see the Russian aggression and Russia strategic policy uh, uh, in its neighborhood, uh, we see that Crimea, Georgia, Eastern Ukraine, and the current episode in Ukraine, uh, we can see them as a wake-up call for the Western policymakers because these countries have been uh, on the victim. We These countries have been the victim and on the receiving end of the geopolitical political tug of war between uh, Russia and the West. Thirdly, Russia is blatantly disregarding the international norms, institutions, uh, and the values. It is violating the uh, UN Charter, it is violating and disregarding the Helsinki Final Act, and even it is uh, disregarding the Paris Charter. Uh, we can see that he, uh, Russia has disregarded the territorial integrity, the sovereignty, and the sanctity of the territorial, uh, the sanctity of the frontiers in Ukraine, Georgia, and its uh, associated military operations. Moreover, it has also violated the Budapest Memorandum uh, uh, under which the Ukraine has surrendered its nuclear arsenals for uh, um, in the return of the security guarantees. Thirdly. Russia is promoting a new state-centric world order and zone of privileged interest, uh, zone of privileged thinking. Russian strategic policy and Russian policy posture uh, in the near abroad and in its strategic backyard is basically pursuing a new state-centric order, which is undermining the collective security spirit of the NATO and the European Union. It is using aggressive uh, actions. It is using um, the coercion. It is using the even brute force and resorting towards conventional, unconventional, subconventional means to implement its own vision of the world order while undermining the Euro-Atlantic institutions, particularly the NATO and the EU. Secondly, it is also promoting a privilege of interest thinking. It, uh, uh, it is promoting the narrative of the uh, areas of privilege interest, area of special interest, and it is also advocating for a limited sovereignty for the states which are present, present in the area of its privilege interest. So therefore, Ukraine is hereby a stepping stone for Russia, and upturning this stone would enable it uh, to project its uh, vision of the Eurasian world order or the Eurasian uh, security architecture in the in the Western Europe and abroad. Now, moving towards the option that how the Russia is undermining the European security architecture. So firstly, we have to see that undermining the current European security architecture is a strategic anxiety, is a strategic necessity for Russia. Firstly, Russia is blatantly undermining the NATO and the European Union. We can see uh, the actions of Russia um, uh, when uh, it is uh, raising the anxieties and is raising the concerns regarding the NATO's expansion towards the east, and also it is uh, uh, blatantly uh, bullying the Western states or the Baltic states, and it is um, using its aggressive posture in its near abroad in the strategic um, 
uh, backyard. So we see that there is a continuous posture of undermining the NATO and uh, diminishing the credibility of the alliance. So we can see that uh, Russia has, um, has uh, on the one hand, Russia is advocating uh, uh, the cooperation with the NATO and uh, NATO-Russia Council, uh, where uh, they need uh, to cooperate on the shared values, while on the other hand, Russia is increasingly um, using the aggressive posture uh, in its neighborhood, and also it is uh, increasing its military capabilities, and uh, um, particularly to uh, enhance its A2 and AD capabilities. So. Hereby, we can see that how the NATO and the EU are being undermined by the Russia. Uh, we can see that in 2021, when Russia announced the closing of its diplomatic talks with uh, diplomatic talk and diplomatic missions to the NATO, while in the following month, Russia also announced a proposal and uh, um, in which uh, it uh, presented a proposal to the NATO and the United States in which uh, it requested some legal guarantees that Ukraine should not join NATO and uh, it also accommodate the existing uh, world order to its needs. So at the same time, Russia provided a broad list of other demands. It includes a request that NATO would return towards a military posture of 1997 and also uh, uh, putting the limitations upon the NATO's uh, missile arsenals and NATO's air defense capabilities and also uh, restricting the U U.S. presence in the region. Secondly, it is also uh, recasting the military superiority. So if we see towards uh, President Putin's vision and his actions, we can see that he's trying to recast the nostalgia of the late Soviet Union and the trauma of the wild 90s. So hereby russia is asserting its military superiority and it is uh, asserting its military actions in black sea in the ukraine and also in the arctic frontiers so the current attempts to challenge the european security architecture can be considered as a call as a wake-up call uh, for the recognition of its great power status and guarantee for its military superiority so russia's uh, intentions did not seem to have been altered in the due course of time as many western policymakers believe on the contrary the sphere of influence thinking has decided stabilize the region. Armenia, Azerbaijan, and even Georgia, Belarus, Moldova, and Ukraine, they all are have been repeatedly the victims of the geopolitical tug of war in the past. So Russia has kept denying its engagement in the conflict in Ukraine. It has also denied the term aggression. Instead, it is using the jargon of the special military operation or the internal conflict. Thirdly, we can see that uh, Russia is implanting its own vision of the European security architecture, that is basically the Eurasian security architecture. Hereby, Russia is, design, is, is desiring uh, to gain a special status and a sense of rational exceptionalism in the European affairs. Meanwhile, Russia is cherry picking the aspects of the European security which suits it and disregard those uh, which are not suiting the Russian interests. So the ongoing situation is a wake up call for the European policymakers to reconcile their priorities, their policies uh, while dealing with Russia uh, with a sense of cautiousness. So hereby I can say that uh, understanding the Russian strategic mindset and its strategic posture is very necessary for the Western policymakers. In the past, uh, West have um, undermined Russia in the wake of, in the end of the Cold War. Uh, the, there was a drastic decline in the interest uh, regarding the Russian studies. Many Russian institutes uh, were shot out of the funding and uh, there were many issues and Russia was portrayed as an overgate and over securitized state. But Russia uh, was uh, but Russian action surprised the Western policymakers, as we can see its invasion of Georgia, we can see its invasion of Syria, and even we can see when it's uh, in the next Crimea. So hereby, understanding the Russian strategic mindset is necessary, and West need to analyze uh, Russia through the Russian point of view instead of analyzing through the national points of exclusivity or the Western universal models. So lastly. In this slide, I will be concluding the presentation and uh, will be discussing that how to deter Russia in future and uh, what the European powers should do to redesign the European security architecture. So firstly, it is very important for the Europe to support the Ukraine. Supporting Ukraine is the foremost and the most formidable task for the European powers. Uh, the Ukraine is fighting uh, Russian aggression since 2022, and uh, the NATO's commitment and NATO's uh, cooperation and its support towards the Ukraine will determine the uh, outcome of the conflict. And Putin's victory in the Ukraine will be a zero-sum game for the Europe. So Ukraine need to be supplied with the desired weapon and munitions. I believe here that necessary and right weapon choices uh, would be provided to Ukraine. Uh, 
uh, battle changing weapons like abrams and challengers uh, were provided to uh, were provided to ukraine but i believe that these weapons uh, require um, a strong integrated system that are hard to fill in the ukraine instead uh, west need to uh, enhance the ukraine's cred capabilities of asymmetrical warfare uh, it should provide ukraine with uh, counter drone and drone technologies and electronic warfare and a bulk of fgm-148 javelins and the scalp and the sh storm shadow missiles Moreover, the conflict is increasingly being characterized as an artillery duel. So uh, hereby, Ukraine will be in the dire need of 155 and 105 mm howitzers and also the high mass uh, long range artillery system. Meanwhile, the dual purpose improved cluster munition and uh, the army tactical missile system provided by the United States will be a force multiplier for the Ukraine. Secondly, if the European security architecture, if the West is uh, the desiring to preserve it, so it need to enhance NATO's forward defense posture. It is applaudable that NATO has uh, shifted from its tripwire strategy towards a sustained presence or what we call it as transatlantic doctrine. So now hereby NATO should be able to conduct the interoperability and the integrated ops. Uh, previously, uh, the NATO deployment in the forward areas and the special contact zone in the Baltic was based upon the national commitment of the alliance members and the troops were placed under the national command. Instead, in the changing situation, I believe that NATO needs a coordinated strategic theater command plan in which the, uh, the troops of the allied forces should be uh, placed under an integrated command of the NATO. So therefore, they will be able to conduct uh, the integrated ops and uh, facilitating the interoperability. Moreover, uh, the gray zone operations and the hybrid warfare tactics are becoming a, a concern for the alliance credibility. So therefore, the European uh, uh, the European states and uh, particularly the NATO forces should be able uh, to integrate themselves with the local uh, law enforcement agencies and also uh, their police and paramilitary forces to uh, facilitate the interoperability. Thirdly, ensuring a stable Europe is a prerequisite and a paramount thing um, when we, we, we talk about redesigning the European security architecture. So uh, hereby, uh, European states should be uh, given, uh, alliance members should be given the credibility and uh, given the credible commitments uh, to defend uh, in case of Russian aggression. If, uh, one, if, uh, if we think that uh, Russia would not commit uh, such actions in the future, we will be gravely mistaken because Russian strategic culture and its uh, apparent obsession with the territorial control will force it to resort towards other means uh, in the near future. So therefore, ensuring a stable uh, stable Europe and enhancing the posture of the NATO uh, would be a very, uh, uh, would be a determining factor uh, in the European security architecture in future. Lastly, future role of Russia in ESA. It is very important. Um, I believe that cornering Russia would, uh, would not uh, be beneficial in the interest of the European powers, interest, uh, uh, interest. Instead, I believe that uh, Russia should be given uh, a credible position and a leading uh, and a credible position in the European security architecture, but in the return of the guarantees and uh, uh, it's, uh, but the return of the guarantees of a very responsible behavior in the European security architecture and its refrain from the use of force uh, uh, in the near future. So hereby, uh, if we conclude that the redesigning European security architecture is necessity is a strategic necessity for the European powers, where the EU and the NATO should be uh, working in the close coordination and also the alliance members should be given the credible commitments uh, to defend themselves in the case of Russian aggression. So hereby, understanding the Russian strategic mindset, their grand strategy, their military strategy is necessary uh, to preserve the European security in the near future. Uh, thank you so much.